Hello my friends, and welcome back to the Ukando TV channel. In this video, we will explore the production process of steel tapered poles with huge diameter. In addition, the video will show you the amazing steel production in big factories around the world. The first step in the manufacturing process is heating the steel. Tata Steel UK LTD produces steel in the form of blooms, which are heated in soaking pits. The blooms are brought on flats from the caster and set into the soaking bay in an area predetermined by the soaking controller. They are then picked up off the flats in the tongs of a VIC crane and charged into the soaking pit according to the instructions given by the soaking controller. Blooms are heated in the pits and then soaked at a temperature and time determined by their quality. For example, the temperature for lead free cutting is 1305 degrees, and the temperature for tire cords is 1275 degrees. Once the steel is judged ready to roll, the VIC crane starts to draw the blooms from the pit and set them on the ingot buggy. Note that the speed of the bloom is slowed so as to present a good front end to the mill. Once loaded on the buggy, the bloom is sent to the pusher, which discharges it onto the mill racks. The primary mill is the first of two reversing mills. The primary mill reduces the size of the stock by a series of passes and tilts before feeding the bloom directly to the secondary mill. The secondary mill again uses a series of passes and tilts to either produce a finished size for direct sale or a bloom or slab to feed into the tens and continuous mill. Inline scarfing is used to remove the surface defects from the steel in order to present a good quality front end to the tens and continuous mill and remove defects. The front and back ends of each bloom are cropped off at the 1200 ton shear. These pieces end up in a pan and are eventually sent back to the boss plant for recycling. After the shear comes the first part of the continuous mill, the roughing mill. This stand mill rolls blooms on the flat as feed for the next stage of the process, the intermediate mill. Prior to entering the intermediate mill, an inline tilter puts the bloom onto its diamond. The bloom then goes through the forced and intermediate mill. At the exit of the intermediate, the assistant roller calipers the product to ensure the correct size is being produced. From the intermediate mill, the bloom, now up to 90 meters long and still on its diamond thanks to unique V-rolls, runs towards the finishing mill. This four-stand mill produces the final saleable product, with the roller being responsible for ensuring that the product is in line with customer requirements. At the exit of the finishing mill is the billet flying shear, which cuts nose and tail props from the product and also shears it into user lengths as determined by the customer or the specification. The billets then run through an inline stamping machine which stamps the cast number on each billet. For slabs and billets greater than 140 mm square, the route avoids the finishing mill, and instead, the steel goes across T3 transfer facilitated by dropping the V-rolls and through the bloom flying shears, traditionally known as P9. One feature of the huge size of the mill is that the shift craft teams have to use mobile plant, in this case a golf buggy to get from job to job.
After the bar sorts are carried out, the ingot packs move across T4 or T5 and down the racks to the cooling banks. At the cooling banks, the steel is laid out onto the cooling bed, which is a long, flat conveyor belt. The steel is allowed to cool slowly and evenly which is crucial in order to prevent the formation of internal stresses and to ensure a uniform microstructure. Once the steel has cooled to the desired temperature, it is cut to its final length using a hydraulic shear. The cut steel is then bundled, weighed, and marked with identifying information, such as the customer's name and the heat number, which identifies the specific batch of steel from which it was made. The finished product is then ready for shipment to customers. The first step in the production process is the procurement of raw materials such as cement, sand, aggregates, and water. These materials are sourced from reliable suppliers and undergo quality checks before being used in the production process. The raw materials are transported to the batching plant, where they are mixed in specific proportions according to the desired mix design. The batching plant is equipped with modern equipment to ensure accurate and consistent mixing of the materials. The precast drainage process involves the use of molds to produce drainage pipes and other precast components. The molds are filled with the concrete mix, which is then allowed to cure before the final product is demolded. The spun production process is used to produce precast concrete piles. The process involves the use of centrifugal force to compact the concrete mix around a steel cage. The resulting pile is then allowed to cure before being cut to the desired length. The spun production process is used to produce precast concrete piles. The process involves the use of centrifugal force to compact the concrete mix around a steel cage. The resulting pile is then allowed to cure before being cut to the desired length. ASO Forge is a Japanese manufacturer of special steel bars, which are used in a wide range of industries such as automotive, construction, and energy. Raw material preparation, ASO Forge uses high-quality raw materials such as iron ore, coal, and scrap steel to produce its special steel bars. The raw materials are carefully selected and undergo strict quality checks to ensure their purity and consistency. Iron making is the process of reducing iron ore to produce pig iron. ASO Forge uses a blast furnace, which injects hot air to create a chemical reaction that reduces the iron ore. The resulting pig iron is then used as a raw material for further processing. Once the pig iron has been produced, it is transported to a steel making plant where it is converted into steel. ASO Forge uses an electric arc furnace to melt the pig iron and other raw materials such as scrap steel and alloys, to produce high-quality steel. The molten steel is then cast into billets, which are long bars of steel that are typically 6 to 12 meters in length. ASO Forge uses a continuous casting process, which involves the pouring of molten steel into a water-cooled mold to solidify it into a billet. The billets are then heated to a high temperature and pass through a series of rolling mills to reduce their diameter and shape them into the desired profile. This process is known as hot rolling and is carried out at high temperatures to ensure the steel remains malleable and easy to shape. 
After hot rolling, the steel bars are heat treated to improve their strength, durability, and other mechanical properties. ASO Forge uses a range of heat treatment processes, including annealing, quenching, and tempering, depending on the specific requirements of the steel. The final step in the manufacturing process is cold drawing, which involves pulling the steel bars through a series of dies to reduce their diameter and improve their surface finish. This process is carried out at room temperature and results in a smooth, polished surface that is free from defects. Once the steel bars have been produced, they undergo strict quality control checks to ensure their compliance with international standards. ASO Forge has a dedicated quality control team that uses advanced testing equipment to check the chemical composition, mechanical properties, and other characteristics of the steel bars. The company also provides test certificates with each order to provide customers with complete traceability and assurance of quality. Haneco is a leading manufacturer of ductile iron pipes and fittings. Their manufacturing process is carefully designed to ensure that their products meet the highest quality standards. The manufacturing process begins with the melting of high quality scrap iron and steel in an electric furnace. The molten metal is then transferred to a ladle, where the necessary alloying elements are added to achieve the desired chemical composition. The molten metal is then poured into a centrifugal casting machine, where it is spun at high speeds to distribute the metal evenly around the mold as the mold cools. The metal solidifies and takes the shape of the mold. This process is called centrifugal casting and is used to produce the ductile iron pipes. After the pipes are cast, they are sent to a finishing area where they are cleaned and any excess metal is removed. The pipes are then lined with a cement mortar coating to protect them from corrosion. The mortar is applied using a high pressure spraying machine and then cured in a stain chamber. The pipes are then coated with an external coating of epoxy or polyurethane to protect them from external corrosion. The coating is applied using a high pressure spraying machine and then cured in a furnace. The fittings are produced using a similar process. The metal is melted and the necessary alloying elements are added to achieve the desired composition. The molten metal is then poured into sand moulds to create the fitting shapes. The moulds are then removed and the fittings are cleaned and coated with a protective layer of epoxy or polyurethane. After the pipes and fittings are finished, they are subjected to rigorous quality control checks to ensure that they meet the required standards. These tests include hydrostatic pressure tests, which check the pipe's strength and durability, and coating thickness tests to check the protective coating's quality. Haneco's manufacturing process is designed to produce 
high-quality ductile iron pipes and fittings that meet the highest standards. Their products are widely used in water supply, sewage and gas pipeline systems and they have earned a reputation for reliability and durability. In addition to manufacturing ductile iron pipes and fittings, Heineco also provides a range of services to its customers. These include technical support, training and installation assistance. Their team of experts is always available to help customers with any questions or issues they may have. The steel production process begins at the Salt Skitter Steelworks, where more than 4 million tons of steel are produced annually by employees who have been known for decades for their dedication to quality. The pig iron produced in three blast furnaces is delivered to the steel mill and then developed in the converter through oxidation of the accompanying elements with oxygen on place procedure. This results in the production of raw steel, which is then heat treated through secondary metallurgy and vacuum treatment to achieve the desired analysis and temperature. Wiesenberg, a subsidiary of Salzgitter AG, produces approximately 400 different chemical compositions, with approximately half for the coarse lead production. Three modern, large-scale systems are in place to handle the liquid steel, depending on the later sheet formats. The slabs are accordingly divided and adjusted for further processing after a surface inspection. Wiesenberg is located on the northern edge of the Harz in Saxony Annals, approximately 55 kilometers southeast of the Salzgitter Steelworks. Flaxstalgo, a subsidiary of Salzgitter AG, produces around 800,000 tons of heavy plate annually in all known qualities, with up to 20.5 tons maximum sheet weight. The slabs produced in Salzgitter are transported by rail to Ilsenberger Grabwickham after visual checks, recorded in the election program, and fed into the push ovens using a jack plug. The slabs are transported through the furnaces on two rails per shop track, allowing the forward movement of the slabs through several pillars formed by the slabs. The slabs are heated using natural gas as a heating medium, and after a residence time of approximately 4 hours, they are ready for the rolling process. The prepared slab is transported on the roller discarded, and the monitoring and control of the warming process in the courtyards, as well as the transport predecessor, is from a central oven control station. The sheet metal is rolled in a four-high configuration, where the sheet lies on support rollers with double bail diameter, and a transverse profile is created in the sheet. Wiesenberg covers sheet metal dimensions between 5 and 120 mm thick, and 800 
to 3500 watt. The two ways of working are connected via a spindle system of one. Each drive motor with the power of 6400 kilowatts driven the hydraulic ones. Electromechanical employment developed maximum rolling forces of up to 800. In connection with the self-developed stitch plan calculator model, optimal prerequisites are given to roll the sheet's computer controlled with fears, thick tolerances over sheet length and width. The thick measurement with isotopes by radiation technology comes in sheet metal center and the two edges. Traces to the application on this extremely stiff roll stand produce dimension tolerances set standards worldwide. After completion of the forest process, if required, a water-intensive cooling process is used to adjust the mechanical and technological values of the area used. The account system, or automatic cooling control system, is an integral part of a complex automation system that manages the cooling process of a metal sheet during manufacturing. This system utilizes data from the previous roll, as well as other relevant parameters, to determine the optimal cooling rate for the current sheet. The account system works in conjunction with the cool model, which serves as the central building block of the automation system. This model takes into account various factors such as the thickness and composition of the metal sheet, as well as the desired final properties of the product. The account system is a crucial component of the metal manufacturing process as it allows for precise and consistent cooling of metal sheets, resulting in high-quality products that meet the required specifications. The process starts with the selection of high-quality steel materials that are sourced from trusted suppliers. The steel materials are carefully inspected to ensure that they meet the required standards for strength durability, and quality. The company's experienced technicians and engineers ensure that the selection process of the raw materials is done with the highest level of precision. The steel is then cut into the desired length using computer-controlled saws to ensure precision and accuracy. Once the steel is cut, it is then placed into a CNC computer numerical control machine, which shapes and welds the steel into the desired tapered pole form. The CNC machine ensures that the tapered poles are produced with high precision and accuracy, with the added benefit of minimizing human error in the manufacturing process. After the poles are shaped and welded, they undergo a series of finishing processes to enhance their durability and aesthetic appeal. These finishing processes include hot dip galvanizing and powder coating, which protect the steel from rust and other environmental damage, while also improving their appearance. The Adira press brake machine is a high-tech piece of equipment that is used to bend and shape the steel poles to the desired angles and curves. The machine is computer-controlled, ensuring that the bending and shaping process is precise and consistent, and that the poles are shaped to meet the required specifications. Finally, the tapered poles undergo a series of rigorous quality control checks to ensure that they meet the required standards and are free from defects. The quality control process includes visual inspection, measurement, and testing to ensure that the poles are of the highest quality and meet the required specifications.
The first step in the process is to uncoil the steel strip from a coil and feed it through a series of rollers that gradually shape the strip into a spiral shape. The rollers are adjustable, which allows for the pipe diameter to be controlled. As the steel strip is being formed into a spiral shape, it is also being welded together using two welding seams. The welding process used is called the submerged arc welding process, which involves feeding a wire electrode into the weld joint and covering it with a layer of flux. The welding process is automated and can be controlled to produce a consistent and strong weld. One of the key features of the online spiral pipe with dual seam tracking process is the use of dual seam tracking. This is a technology that uses sensors to track and monitor the position of the two welding seams as they are being welded together. The sensors are able to detect any deviations in the welding seams and adjust the welding process in real time to ensure that the seams remain in the correct position. The use of dual seam tracking is important because it helps to ensure that the welding seams are in the correct position, which is essential for the strength and durability of the pipe. If the welding seams are not in the correct position, it can lead to leaks and other structural issues. Once the spiral pipe has been welded together, it is then cut to the required length using a saw or plasma cutter. The ends of the pipe are then beveled to allow for easy connection to other pipes or fittings. 